Uh, okay, I was kiddos. Here's a mini walkthrough of the chapter eight study guide. Now I'm not going to go too in depth in it, but I'm just going to kind of show you the basics here. So um, some of these I'm not even going to solve. I'm just going to show you how to set them up because I uh, don't have my calculator on me right now. So there you go. So, we know a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That is the Pythagorean theorem. So, when we solve for x here, we're going to use one of three different equations. And that is c equaling the square root of a squared plus b squared, a equaling the square root of c squared minus b squared, or b equaling the square root of c squared minus a squared. C is always the hypotenuse, A and B can switch around, it's really not that big a deal. So how do we know which one's the hypotenuse? Whenever we have a right triangle, hypotenuse is always right across from the 90 degree angle. So in this case we're looking for C, so we're going to use this formula right here. C equals the square root of A squared plus B squared. Like I said, we know this is the hypotenuse, so that can be A and B. So C equals the square root of, jumping the gun a little bit, 9 squared plus 17 squared. Now after you do that, you are going to be going to the nearest tenth. Make sure you read your instructions. Now notice here for number 4, we know that this is 18, so we know this is 18 as well. We can't solve for x, but we can use this triangle right here. We know this is c, this is a, this is b. Again, a and b can switch, it really doesn't matter. So we know that b equals the square root of c squared minus a squared. Or b equals the square root of 18 squared minus 13 squared. Now notice when we do that, it's going to give us this. So then x is going to be 2 times b, because it's halfway there. Okay. Um, so if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it's a right triangle. If a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared, it's acute. And if a squared plus b squared is less than c squared, then it's obtuse. And then we want to read this over here as well. And what's important to remember here is that c squared is always going to be the biggest one. So like in this one we go, how does 20 squared plus 21 squared match up? To 29 squared. I don't remember exactly what the number is, but I know at this um, this one they're equal. So since they're equal, it's a right triangle. Okay, so let's look at number 11. So we know here that this is going to be 1, 1, radical 2. And this is going to be 1, radical 3, 2. So for... Finding each variable here, we'd go and look at our flow charts that I gave you. Here we're given a leg in a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So we copy that leg over and then multiply it by the square root of 2 for the hypotenuse. Fifteen is a little bit tougher. So this is 42. We would then, because this is the long leg, we would look at our chart, it's that middle aisle, and we'd multiply it by the square root of 3 over 3. And that would give us the short leg. So that's going to be 42 radical 3 over 3, and this can be simplified. So 42 divided by 3 is 14. So that's 14 radical 3. And that's going to be our short leg. And then we multiply that by 2 to get our hypotenuse. Everyone's funnest thing, geometric means. 
So for these first ones, you're just going to set up what numbers the geometric mean between those two. And remember, we can kind of just jump to right here. Now, I do want you to be, um, as it doesn't give you a specific, um, like, tenth or hundredths, leave these in simplified radicals. So this would be 2 times 7. This would be 2 times 16, which is 2 times 8. I know I switched those around, but it's okay. 2 times 4. And 2 times 2. So we have 1, 2, 3 groups of 2 on the outside. And the lonely little square to set on the inside. So here x would equal 8 radical 7. Okay, so on this one, um, there are a couple of different ways you can do it. Uh, remember, go back and look at your notes. Well, I don't know what just happened. Oh, I got really little. Go back and look at your notes for geometric means, and you'll see that there's the altitude theorem and the leg theorem. So here, this is the altitude. If we remember, the altitude is the geometric mean of the two hypotenuse segments. So x is going to be the square root of 180. Over here, we know that the leg is the geometric mean of the entire hypotenuse and the segment closest to the leg or adjacent to the leg. Okay, and I believe that turns out to be 3 radical 66. Okay, sine, cosine, tangent. Remember, so, ka, toa. So here, remember, little guy sits right there. This is the hypotenuse. He's always standing on the corner of hypotenuse and adjacent. So this is my opposite, and that's for Q. Remember that if we did this for... R, that would still be the hypotenuse, but now this is the adjacent and that's the opposite. So for Q, sine opposite over hypotenuse is going to be 30 over, we don't know. We don't know what the hypotenuse is. So we're going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem. I go 30 squared plus 16 squared. And we'd figure that out. And then so that would be 30 over the hypotenuse. Cosine Q would be 16 over the hypotenuse. And tangent of Q would be 30 over 16. Okay, so for number 27, again, I don't have my calculator with it, so I'll just show you how to set them up. If I'm standing right here, this is my hypotenuse, this is my adjacent, and this is my opposite. So we're trying to relate opposite and adjacent, that's tangent. I know that tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of 54 equals x over 9 or x equals 9 times the tangent of 54. And you can actually just enter it directly into your calculator like that. Um, I wish I would stop doing that. Let's 
Okay. We'll skip angles of elevation and depression. Actually, I'm not. So the important thing to learn here is remember that the angles of elevation and depression are from straight. So the Town Park is an outdoor movie night every Saturday during the summer on a large screen. Kate. She has an abnormally long torso, apparently. There we go. Kate's sitting down 36 feet from the base of the screen. Watching a movie with her family, the angle of elevation from Kate to the top of the screen is 24 degrees. How tall is the movie screen? So once you have that drawing, you can go ahead and use it to figure out um, what X is. Okay, so this is the one that um, people get stuck up on, and that's angle of depression. So while parasailing, Ryan spots a dolphin down below. So. Happy little dolphin. Put some. Can't put gills on him because that would make him a shark. Or at least a fish. So put a little blowhole right there. Okay. Now the angle of oppression is. So we know he's 220 feet, 8 feet up. We know the angle of depression is 15 degrees. Now, a lot of people, what they want to do is just draw this triangle right there and go 15 degrees, but that's wrong. Okay, because what we're actually going to do, remember that the angle of depression is right there. So that's 15 degrees. This right here is 228. And we're looking for this right there. Now, the difference there and why that's so important is notice that if I have this triangle, that's the worst triangle I've ever drawn. If I have this triangle right here, where this is 15 and this is 228, then in solving for this, which is the horizontal distance, I'm going to go the tangent of 15 equals 228 over x, opposite over adjacent. However, if I just drop that right there directly from Brian and say that this is 15 and this is 228, and I'm looking for x there, now my answer would be the tangent of 15 equals x over 228. Now these two right here are going to get vastly different answers, and that's why that's wrong. Okay, law of sines and cosines. Um, remember that in general, and there's ABC, there are multiple variations. The law of cosines looks like this. Sorry, I was thinking ahead. Um, so when we have opposites, That's when we're thinking law of sines and law of cosines, or law of sines. When we have side angle side, or side side side, that's when we're going to use the law of cosines. Remember the law of cosines? Two major variations. I'm just going to solve both of them for A. I know A equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine angle a and then you find that you square root it and that will give you a or we can go angle a equals the inverse cosine of 
a squared minus b squared minus c squared over negative 2bc. Okay, so when we look at the log cosines here, so we see opposite there, but we don't have another opposite. But we do see here is side, angle, side. So if we call this A, this B, this C, and this is angle A. So we would set up that A equals the square root. Oh, it says use the log cosines. Well, that's easy. Not a whole lot of thought going on there, is it? When it tells you which ones to do. Okay, so I'm actually going to go backwards a little bit and do just show you how to set up on the lot side ones. So this one, we have A equals, and we're going to go B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of A. So we'd end up with X equals the square root of 22 squared plus 27 squared minus 2 times 22 times 27 times the cosine of 73. Okay, so that's how you do that. You just can plug all that into your calculator. If you have any questions, please let me know. Law of signs. So notice how we have opposites here, right? Or rather, we have these are opposites, and then we need this set of opposites right here. So what we can do is we know this is 27, this is 34, together they add up to 61, which means that this angle right here has to be 119, 180 minus 61. So we know that the sine of 119 over x equals the sine of 27 over 5, which is going to end up giving us 5 times the sine of 119 divided by the sine of 27 equals x. Plug that into your calculator. And moving on. Okay, and then on these ones, um, you just need to figure out. So like here we have side, side, side. So we use the law of cosines to figure out um, two of the angles. Or, well, we first need it. So let's say we're going to solve for r first. We know that the measure of angle r is going to be equal to, and then we go the one directly across from it, minus the other two, minus two times the other two. I'm doing the wrong one. Erase, erase, erase. I was doing... So the measure of angle R is going to be the inverse cosine of opposite minus one of the other ones minus the other one all over minus two times 11 times six. And then, so let's just say that was like 10. Then you could do like 13 sine of 10 over 13 equals the sine of P over 6 and solve for P. And then once you had two of them, you just subtract by 180 to get the third one. And I think that is a pretty decent run through of most of them. I want you guys, especially on the word problems, to try and solve as many as possible. Try and get it as far as possible. So even if you get stuck, we can come back and go, okay, where did you get stuck? Why did you get stuck? And that's it. Have a wonderful evening. Ever, I guess, morning now. It's 1230. And I'll see you guys later today. Bye.